And we made sure we're not in the ticky talk format. <laughs> we're not. Okay. So we're going the right direction. We're not in ticky talk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys haven't figured it out. My girlfriend has a ticky talk, and apparently I have to have a ticky talk too. Tick tock. Whatever. It's a ticky talk. I'm an elder millennial. Old man. Okay. Ready? Mm hmm. You recording? Mm hmm. Right. <laughs> I'm recording. Well, I'm not going to argue with $40. $40 is a pretty decent investment for a 5 horsepower, 33 gallon Craftsman, except for the problem is it's got a big giant hole blown through the bottom of it. If we come around here, we're going to see right here, we've got a big giant hole there, we've got a hole there, and as you come down through, you'll see there's rust out spots here that look like they're coming from the inside and a rust out spot down in here that looks like it's coming from the inside right here. So what we're going to do, and you should never ever try doing this for a long term thing, is we're going to try to cut a piece that fits over the top of this. We're going to weld it in place, and this is only so that we can test and make sure that the pump assembly will actually pump up and come up to pressure and then we are going to slice this off of this tank. Stay tuned. And change our attention now to this. Now I've torn down a lot of hot water tanks before. This one is an 80 gallon. We're going to hope is in good enough condition. Over here we've got another smaller 40 gallon and basically they're all built essentially the same exact way. You've got an outer layer of metal. You've got some sort of insulation inside. If it's a newer one, it is flame retardant foam. And the key word there is retardant, not flame resistant. Um, if you get into it with a grinder to cut out like I just did on these and you don't pay attention, you will light that foam on fire inside and it will spread. So only cut deep enough to be able to cut through and then move on. If you see any smoke, take your time, stop, spray it down with water, all that kind of stuff. So in order to open one of these tin cans, you take all the screws out of the top. You take all the screws out of the bottom. Most of those are going to be rusted. Don't even bother trying to unscrew them. Just take your grinder and zip the heads right off. Pop the can off on that end, pop the can off on that end. Now, if you're trying to save a piece of sheet metal in order to be able to use, because this is really decent sheet metal, you could use it as the skin on a plow, you could use it for all kinds of stuff. What you do is right here where you see this seam, you get a friend to run a water spray bottle and you take and you slice that all the way down through with your grinder and then you peel everything off. There we go. Now we gotta dig out the rest of it. Basically, take a utility knife, slice it, start smashing, and uh, go from there. Alright, Mark the Maniac here wants to go and demonstrate just how dangerous this foam is. And, you know, I just, I can't help it. I like Mark the Maniac, so here we go. I mean, we are dealing with a hot water tank. We're dealing with something that's designed to hold 300 PSI. But you really do have to be careful when you're grinding on one of these hot water tanks. They burn really easily. This is why when you're installing hot water, you got to make sure that you get all your electrical connections all set. Make sure that there's no arcing. Make sure everything's going to be safe and all that kind of stuff. I mean... That managed to go and make it almost to mark the maniac here in a matter of seconds. That could be your house. That's my watch out tip for this episode.
Oh, that would have gone out a lot better if I had to hit some snow that wasn't hard pack. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go out. There. There we go. Huh. Ah, that came off of a baking pan and it looks about exactly like how I normally bake. Cool. Not everything in YouTube world ever goes as planned, and unfortunately, it's just been one of those last couple of weeks for me. We ended up scoring an amazing 220 volt, 5 horsepower air compressor, and it worked when I bought it, except for I brought it home, I welded the tank long enough in order to test it so that I could throw it on top of that nice 80 gallon, and I guess the 1986 motor on it just decided that was its last straw and decided to go and fry. This is the part where there just is no glamour to it, so I'm just going to get it done, but I want to touch on this. Before you ever decide to do this, you need to check the bottom of your tank. You need to make sure your seam welds are all solid. Here at the bottom where the spigot is, is where most of your concentrated rust is going to be, because if it had a leak, it's going to be at this spigot, or it's going to be at one of the electrodes above it, the heating elements. And so this is the area you want to double and triple check. If there is any major actual rust going through here, do not use one of these tanks. But for now, this is the boring part where the supervisor just sits there and watches while you grind off all the extra stuff on the tank so that you can paint it. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to Rust-Oleum coat the entire underside of this, and then I'm going to truck bed liner a coat around the whole exterior of it also once the Rust-Oleum settles in. That way, when I move this thing around and I'm scuffing it around, it'll have that protective coat of truck bed liner in order to make sure that I don't scuff this and start a rusting point. The Even when people say, So, keep working towards it. You're going to get everything up and running eventually. Alright, so here's our final project. Everything's all put together. This is a 30 gallon hot water tank. As you can see down here, we've got our original valve still here. That's going to act as our water drain valve because it's at the bottom of the tank. These bottoms actually concave up. So this acts as your actual water drain. Make sure to use it on a regular basis, just like any other air tank. If you take your heating elements and you slice them off, they seal up, they hold air, they're perfectly fine. If you're really worried about it, you can undo these and you can put a plug, just a regular cast iron plug. As far as up here on top, we've got an adapter coming down through to a quarter inch piece of cast iron. From there, we've got our safety blow off here. And this is rated for 150 PSI as usual. We've got a regular standard outgoing valve. We've got our motor with our pump in the back. It's a 1.5 horsepower. This came off of a regular standard on demand. Nothing special whatsoever. All of this is just your standard items you can find. Tank from a junkyard, all the valving and everything all came from a hardware store. About $40 worth of stuff. And the air compressor came off of a $50 on demand compressor that was made for running a brad nailer or some other thing. We've got our on-off up here. It's set for 120 PSI in order to cut off. We've got our outlet here set like we usually would at 60 to 80. Otherwise than that, it's just a compressor. Hot water tanks are actually rated higher than a regular air compressor tank. They're rated at 300 PSI when they're tested, and they operate at a possible PSI of 150. So the rating on this tank is actually better than an air compressor tank. Have fun, everyone. Build one yourself. What's the worst that can happen? Explodes? Oh, well. Did you really have to stick your tongue out? Yes. Okay.
Very much so, because I'm a TikTok girl. You're a TikTok girl? Apparently. Okay. 